and then uh, 34. Here's a lymph node, big nerves over here. Look, you know it's nerve because once you got a big deep nerve like this, you can see axons right there with the clear space around that is myelin, that's the cross section. And then in longitudinal section, you can see the axon running down the middle. And then these little lines to the side, those are called, those are not Ron, uh, nodes of Ron VA. I thought that when I first saw this long ago, but someone on Twitter actually uh, educated me. These are something a little more fancy called um, uh, Lanterman Schmidt uh, incisures, the vertical incisures of Lanterman Schmidt. And that's where Schwann cell cytoplasm is coming out after it wraps the axon with myelin. The, the cytoplasm comes out and joins up with the nucleus of the cell outside the nerve. So try that out on your friends at your next cocktail party and see if they like it. But just a benign and beautiful normal histology there, okay, that we don't see very often in the skin. So here's a lymph node, and this is in parotid. Parotid has acinar cells. Little, little clusters and they have a purple granular cytoplasm because of uh, enzyme secreting granules in them. And then the ducts are double layer uh, cuboidal or columnar, depending on which ducts you're looking at. And uh, they kind of cystic change like this. These have like some oncocytic kind of change to them. There's ducts right here. And then the, the tissue looks similar to excrement pancreas, except that there's um, a lot of fat mix, mixed in with it. So that's parotid gland. And it's a, a pure, a serous gland without any mucinous component, as opposed to the submandibular and sublingual glands, which have uh, submandibular um, has a mix of serous purple cells and mucin cells, and sublingual has pure mucin cells, so um, as do minor salivary glands. So there you go, there's some histology for us. Here's a lymph node, and so this was removed as a sentinel node for head and neck melanomas. Often when they do the um, radioactive tracer, the draining is often to a parotid node, if it's like from the, say the melanomas from the temple or the ear. So I often see uh, nodes in the parotid uh, taken out, and then they take the parotid, partial, partial parotidectomy with it a lot of times. Sometimes the node can be in the parotid, and one weird thing that I wanted to make sure you knew about um, if you're watching this and you're new, is that in the parotid, the parotid tissue can be present inside the lymph node. Normally, epithelial cells, we do not want to see inside lymph nodes, right? That worries us for metastatic carcinoma. But in intraparotid lymph nodes, this one is right, right next to the parotid, but when they're down in the parotid, it's normal to see parotid glands and ducts scattered in the lymph node. And guess what? Parotid, uh, some of the cells of the parotid uh, glands are SOX10 positive, and some parotid um, uh, sweat, um, salivary glands tumors are SOX10 positive. And that's true also of eccrine coils in the skin. SOX10 positivity is, is normally present in those cells. And some sweat gland tumors like cylindromas and spironomas are SOX10 positive. So SOX10 is a great sensitive marker for melanocytes, but it's not specific. It stains neural crest, things like nerve sheath tumors. And it also stains a subset of salivary and sweat gland tumors and other stuff. So just know that. All right. So in this lymph node here, the, the point of uh, this specimen actually was to see that this is metastatic melanoma. So this is why we do stains. At low power, it can be a little hard to pick up on this, especially when it's small and focal, because melanocytes often have kind of a, some similarity to histiocytes, I think. Um, they can look a lot like histiocytes, they're kind of the same color and similar shape nuclei sometimes. So these here, these spindled cells here, I think, and these little nests, are the melanoma cells. You can see, in this case, pigment production, but you don't always have that. So if you did a stain, you would see that this is these are melanoma cells, and they're in the subcapsular sinus underneath the, uh, the capsule of the node, that space between the node parenchyma and the uh, capsule, which is where usually metastatic deposits of melanoma go first. Um, this is a case, though, where which is tricky compared to what I just showed. And I just said, oh, nevus runs as a little linear thing in the capsule, and melanoma doesn't usually do that. But yes, yeah, sometimes it does. And here's one of those times. Now, thankfully, we've got, I think these cells are more hyperchromatic, atypical looking. Uh, but, you know, it's easy to say that because we got obvious melanoma down here. So, and also it's a study set and it's labeled, so we know the history. But uh, here, I think what's happening is this is a lymphatic space right here. And so the, sometimes the nevus cells can fill up, I'm sorry, the uh, metastatic melanoma can fill um, a, uh, a lymphatic, an efferent lymphatic as it comes into the lymph node capsule. And that can kind of mimic um, a metastatic melanoma. So in those kind of cases, you might need stains, especially if that's the only thing you've got. I feel like when I've seen that, oftentimes there have been other foci inside the node, but not always. So so in any case, it can be challenging in some cases. These lymph nodes are not, not my favorite kind of specimen to deal with because they take a long time and they can be difficult and frustrating. So that's melanoma here. Remember that you don't always see pigment. I would also point out while we're here, 
just if you've not looked at a lot of lymph nodes before for anyone watching this, this is not melanoma. This is sinus histiocytosis. You get uh, pockets and clusters of lymph of histiocytes that fill up the subcapsular sinus and the sinusoids going down into the lymph node in reactive lymph nodes is a common benign finding. I remember as a first year pathology resident, I would constantly be, these would catch my eye and I would go look and study it because I was worried it was metastatic tumor. With practice, you're, I will get used to this. And I still, though, from time to time, will see one and I'll just go down at higher power and double check that they look like histiocytes. With immunostains, you can tell it apart, but you don't always need that. With practice, you can learn to recognize these. They have bland nuclei that are kind of oval or almost bean-shaped, very fine, delicate chromatin, abundant, fluffy, loose cytoplasm that kind of blends in with its neighbors. Uh, so it doesn't have well-defined cell borders, kind of loose aggregates. Um, so that's sinus histiocytosis, and it can kind of mimic, particularly um, when you're looking for melanoma. Melanoma cells can have overlap with histiocytes, like I said, so it can be a little challenging um, without practice and uh, even with practice. The other thing is, I think I found some in here, is that pigment in a lymph node is not always bad, okay? And especially if a person has a had a melanoma, they may have had pigment production by the melanoma, some of which leaked out into the dermis from pigment incontinence, got picked up by histiocytes and drained to lymph nodes. So we see melanin pigment in lymph nodes sometimes. I mean, pretty often actually in histiocytes. You could do a stain and this would be negative for SOX10 and, and usually negative for MART, although sometimes you can get some cross-reactive staining with MART you gotta be careful with. Um, so that's important to know that you can have that. Also patients that have significant inflammation in their skin or if they have eczema or other inflammatory process, the pigment of their epidermis falls out, can go to lymph nodes, and you can also get reactive lymph nodes in the setting of eczematous dermatitis called lymph lymphadenop um, I'm sorry, dermatopathic lymphadenopathy, which is a, a reactive lymph nodes with melanin pigment drained to them um, in the histiocytes that is in patients with bad um, eczematous dermatitis. So important to know that that pigment does not prove melanoma. I see this all the time in benign lymph nodes with no melanoma. So if you're not familiar with that now, you are.